Hello, I am Shifa Ahmed in charge of the Department of History of Art at the Institute of Global and Historical Studies. I welcome you to our conference on the beauty of forms in Pakistani art. In this conference, we have scholars from various institutions across Pakistan who will discuss formalism in Pakistani art. I'm confident that this conference will serve as a platform for discussing new approaches to view Pakistani art from different perspective of formalism. Thank you for your presence and I'm sure you will enjoy this conference. Thank you. My name is Ali Faisal. I did my honors in history from Government College and University Laura and at the moment I am doing a MPhil in art history from the same university. My research interests are colonialism, post-colonialism, ideas, culture and uh, propaganda. I did my extensive research on the colonial pandemics and I traced the racism into it. Today I will be presenting the topic for analyzing the formal aspects in paintings, a case study of Abdul Rahman Chuktai's works before and after partition. So beginning with the presentation, I will be describing uh, what is formalism and before doing it, uh, I will be quoting a quote from the Dennis Morris. Dennis Morris says that uh, a picture before it is a picture of a battle horse, a woman, a nude woman, uh, any some story, it is essentially a flat surface which is covered with colors in a certain order. So this quote signifies the importance of formalism. And uh, formalism at its ease can be defined as a theory or any approach uh, which describes or which deals with the formal aspects of any artwork, specifically painting. Uh, if we are talking about the painting and we are talking about the formalism, the formalism would uh, deal with its composition, tone, material, pictorial space and form. So let's come to the presentation and I hope this presentation would be helpful for the art students and the people who are interested in art as usual. So before coming to the presentation and uh, coming to my thesis or my presentation, I will be starting with Abdul Rahman Chuktai's works, uh, which were pres uh, which were created after the partition, and then I will come to the presentation. Okay, before the partition, what he did created, what he did create in subcontinent, and uh, while doing analysis of these two things, I will be uh, situating the existing literature as well as I will try to fill in the gaps which are most probably there because uh, many art pieces have been uh, created but uh, they do not have necessarily uh, focused on the importance of formal aspects. So I will begin with the formal analysis of uh, the first painting College Girls then I will do the formal analysis of another painting, Yashoda, and then I will be differentiating, then I will come to the conclusion. So let's begin uh, with the formal analysis of first painting, College Girls. So this is a painting of watercolor on paper. Initially, it is uh, when we talk about its pictorial space, you can see that one third of this painting has been taken by two girls. And uh, when we talk about its uh, color, you can see that uh, light colors are used when we are talking about girls, but strong and intense colors are used in the background. And uh, while we are talking about colors, there is an, another aspect, which is lines. Chuktai Saab has covered uh, are used linear as well as contour lines. If you are going to look at the background, you would find that linear lines have been used while looking at the face and looking at the uh, clothes of the girls, you can find that contour lines or the curve lines have been used. While there are another accessories too, which can be described in this painting. There are books, there are sandals and there are ornaments, some kind of, and there is also dupatta. These things describe or imitate the importance of the subject of the painting, which is, of course, college girls. You can see lines have been used in the form of the books as well as in the sandals. And if you see that both girls are looking towards each other, now there, this can be said that there is a close intimacy between two classmates. 
this was the formal analysis of the first painting which was created after the partition and before coming to the analysis formal analysis of the painting which was created before the partition i will be situating the uh, literature review here if we talk about uh, chuktai saab he was associated with two schools bengal school of arts and mio school of arts in lahore both schools are very important while we are discussing the history of art history in south asia the first school bengal school was uh, as thakur ta goa claims was that school does not only focused on the content of the paintings but it also focused on the aesthetic and the formal qualities of the paintings and another uh, thing when we come to the mio college mio art school we can see that they did not only focus on the but it was gradually it was developing like it has not developed yet fully but it was developing and chuktai saab was related to both schools and he was influenced from both schools but later on we can find that uh, in the interview given to the mr tasir chuktai saab highlighted the importance of the individuality of the artist here we can situate that his artistic aesthetic universe was created by him and it was different altogether different from the bengal school as well as the mio school which can be claimed or which can be said as chuktai's art and it is a another universe so let's come to the formal analysis of another painting which is yashoda this painting too is uh, painted on watercolor paper and uh, same like there are there is a woman which is uh, namely yashoda and there is a child uh, in his lap which is krishan you can see the image in uh, beside me speaking of the pictorial so half of the space is taken by two uh, two people there is a woman there is a child and uh, it's moderate in size it's not huge before coming to the colors let's talk about the form it's in triangular form it's not uh, in any other form and uh, it shows the intimacy between both of these people and you can see that half of the space of the painting is taken by a woman and a child which is being breastfed by her the other half of the painting is the background where there is a lamp situated apart from the background there are no shapes used and in the background the shapes have been used by uh, the shapes are in uh, rectangular as well as other shapes have been used some shapes are used in the background and apart from those no shapes can be seen however the position of the woman and child is a triangular form as i already told you which emphasizes the harmony the child can also be seen as wearing some kind of ornaments as the woman is also wearing some kind of ornaments in the neck ears as well as feet but there is only one cloth which is used for the covering of the woman's or uh, which is uh, being used by the child to cover his parts the size of the ornaments are the woman are comparatively bigger than the ornaments worn by the child the woman is not shown as not covering her breast she has just a dupatta wearing and uh, if we talk about the form in details huge shawl has covered her face and uh, one can see that the woman is looking to her forward left and baby is faced towards the her breast somehow it demonstrates that the act of breast feeding has been completed and now baby was trying to sleep if we talk about the lines one can easily say that apart from the background no linear lines have been used however contour lines are used in a manner that has been that has made the beauty of the clothes as well as the bodies of the people one can see the excessive use of the curve lines contour lines which symmetrically brings up the beauty of the form in the painting just like as the it were used in the college girls painting when we talk about the colors we can see that the woman is a light dark skinned and the child is painted in a light dark color of blue and black which somehow makes it gray the colors of the woman child and uh, women's and child's clothes are carefully chosen her dupatta is light golden with some textures on it and her lower part 
clothes are lightly navy blue in color. Her dupatta is appealing while talking about the only cloth of child is white in color. Finally, talking about the background, I was talking about the background of the image of the painting. It's carefully chosen and it's in a texture of three colors, orange, red and golden color. This tells that the time is around sunset and the lamp which is being used or which is placed there also signifies that, that there would be soon night. So this was the uh, formal analysis of the second painting which was created before the partition. Now let's come to the differences. When we talk about the materials used in both paintings, there is no difference as both paintings were created by watercolors on paper. However, if we talk about the lines, objects, use of colors, no one could easily determine the difference. The lines used in both paintings are different to one another as first painting has a lot of linear lines. However, the second painting has more control lines. The use of the color and textures are so different. Uh, the painting created before the partition, the dark colors are heavily used while in the second painting, the colors are light. When it comes to the forms, the images can be seen that clothes are not similar in any way. The colors used in background are also different in setting. So there is a lot of difference between both paintings uh, created by uh, the same artist Abdul Rahman Chuktai, but the time period is different. One is created after the partition and one is created before the partition. And we can see clearly see the influence of Chuktai's own individuality on the the first painting college girls which was created after a partition and before the partition we can see the importance or we can see the influence of the bengal school so in conclusion there are i would be making just three points uh, that are firstly for chuktai the formal aspects of the paintings were more important than the context this can be seen in the interview of the mr tasir as i already mentioned it the secondly the formal aspects of the paintings of Chuktai's artworks were influenced by different schools. Thirdly and lastly, these influenced formal elements can be only seen in the painting of pre-partition works. Post-partition, Chuktai not only developed his own idea about painting art, but the formal elements in his work were also changed. Thus, it took a turn which became Chuktai art. I thank you all. السلام علیکم آج کی کانفرنس کے حوالے سے بیوٹی آف فارم ان پاکستانی آرٹ کے حوالے سے جو میرا آرٹیکل جو میرے پیپر کا ٹائٹل ہے وہ ہے فارملزم ان بیوٹی ان کنٹیمپرری منیچر آرٹ ان پاکستان اسٹڈی آف ولی اللہ میرانیز ورک آئی ایم حسام الدین میرانی ورکنگ ایز اے لیکچرر ان انسٹیٹیوٹ آف آرٹ اینڈ ڈیزائن یونیورسٹی آف سن جام شورو and I have completed my bachelor's in communication design from Center of Excellence in Art and Design, Mera University, Jamshoro. Then after I have completed my MFA degree in graphic art from Foundation University, Islamabad. Then after I have completed my MPhil degree in Art and Design from University of Sin, Jamshoro. Presently, I am following the PhD uh, studies from uh, GC University Lahore. Ab, jab hum apne, uh, topic pe baat karte hain, uh, formalism, uh, form of beauty and I am uh, discussing about the miniature art. Miniature art ki jab bhi baat ki jati hai, to South Asia ka area us mein prominent rehta hai. Kyunke South Asian mein jo bhi mamalik a jate hain, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh aur uske ilawa Nepal, तो उसमें मिनीचर आर्ट बहुत ज़्यादा एक्सपेरिमेंट किया गया है और हमारे एरिया में ख़ास तौर पे पाकिस्तान में जो बहुत ज़्यादा आर्ट वर्क प्रैक्टिस किए गए हैं आर्किटेक्चर के बाद उसमें मिनीचर सर फहरिस्त नज़र आता है मिनीचर के बहुत सारे स्टाइल्स हैं जो प्रैक्टिस किए जाते हैं फ्राम अर्ली हिस्ट्रीज़ उसमें सबसे ज़्यादा जो फेमस स्टाइल हुआ था جس کو ہم اسکول بھی کہتے ہیں منیچر اسکول بھی کہتے ہیں وہ مغل منیچر اسکول ہے اس کے علاوہ بنگالی اسکول اس کے علاوہ راجستانی اسکول اس کے علاوہ پرشن اسکول بھی یہاں پہ پریکٹس کیے جاتے رہے ہیں 
مختلف اوقات میں اور اس کے علاوہ جو علاقائی اس میں ایک ٹریڈیشنل ٹچ بھی آتا رہا ہے جیسے کلوڑا پیریڈ میں سندھ میں پریکٹس ہوا ہے فرام ملتان ٹو سندھ اس میں ایک الگ اس کا ٹریڈیشن آتا ہے جب ہم منیچر کے حوالے سے فارم کی بات کرتے ہیں آئی تھنک فارملس تھیوری پہلے اگر میں فارملزم کے بارے میں یا فارملزم تھیوری کے بارے میں بات کر رہا ہوں تو ایز وی نو فارملزم تھیوری انفیسائز آن دا فارمل کوالٹیز آف اینی آرٹ ورک جس میں ہم اس کی کوالٹیز وہ کوالٹیز جو اس کے کمپوزیشن کے حوالے سے کلر کے حوالے سے لائن کے حوالے سے ٹیکسچر کے حوالے سے جو اس کے ویژول ایلیمنٹس ہوتے ہیں اس کے حوالے سے جتنی بھی ڈسکشن ہوتی ہے وہ فارملزم تھیوری کے اکارڈنگلی یا فارملزم تھیوری کے فریم ورک میں ہم ڈسکس کر سکتے ہیں اور فارملزم تھیوری ہمیں اسسٹ کرتی ہے کسی بھی آرٹ ورک کو اس کے فارمل کانٹیکس میں ایکسپلین کرنے کے لیے انڈرسٹینڈ کرنے کے لیے اینالائز کرنے کے لیے اور فارمل تھیوری جیسے ہمیں پتہ ہے کہ ٹونٹی ایتھ سینچری میں شروع ہوئی اور اس کے بعد پھر جو شروعات ہوئی اس سے رشیا سے ہوئی اور بعد میں وہ پریکٹس ہوتی ہوتی یورپ میں زیادہ ایز این آرٹ فارم پریکٹس ہوئی بیسیکلی اگر میں کہوں اپنی پرسنل اپروچ سے تو یہ فارملزم تھیوری سے زیادہ ایک فارملسٹ اپروچ ہے ٹو اینالائز ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ ٹو ایویلیوٹ اینی اسپیسیفک آرٹ ورک فارملسٹ تھیوری کو میں ایک اپروچ زیادہ سمجھوں گا جو کسی بھی آرٹ ورک کو سمجھنے کے لیے اب آرٹ ورک کیا ہے یا آرٹ کیا ہے ایک آرٹ ورک وہ ہے جو ہمارے فیلنگس کو یا ہمارے ایستھیٹیکل ایموشنس کو پرووک کرے ہم اس کو آرٹ ورک کہہ سکتے ہیں اب وہ آرٹ ورک تھری ڈی فارم میں بھی ہو سکتا ہے ویژول فارم میں بھی ہو سکتا ہے پرفارمنگ میں بھی ہو سکتا ہے میوزک میں بھی ہو سکتا ہے ساؤنڈ میں بھی ہو سکتا ہے کسی بھی فارم میں ہو سکتا ہے اور ایستھیٹک ایموشنس کیا ہیں وہ ایموشنل ایٹریبیوٹس یا وہ ہماری فیلنگس جو کسی سگنیفیکنٹ فارم کو دیکھنے کے بعد باہر آئیں یا اس کو اس کا ہم ریزلٹنٹ اس کو کہہ سکتے ہیں تو وہ ایستھیٹیکل ایموشنس جب ہمارے باہر نکلتے ہیں تو کوئی نہ کوئی آرٹ ورک جو سامنے جو فارمس پڑی ہوتی ہیں ہمارے اوپر اثر انداز ہوتی ہے سیم اگر ہم منیچر کے حوالے سے یا خاص طور پہ ولی اللہ کے پینٹنگ کے حوالے سے اگر بات کریں جو ولی اللہ کی پینٹنگ ہے وہ ایک کنٹیمپرری منیچر ہے جو کنٹیمپرری منیچر کہلایا جاتا ہے وہ کون سے زمرے میں آتا ہے جو ٹریڈیشنل پریکٹسز کو بریک کرتا ہے ویسے تو کنٹیمپرری آرٹ ورک اسی کو کہا جاتا ہے جو موجودہ آرٹسٹ پریکٹس کریں ہم اس کو کنٹیمپرری آرٹ کہہ سکتے ہیں لیکن ایز اے کنٹیمپرری ایز اے ٹرم اس کو کہا جاتا ہے جو ٹریڈیشنل پریکٹسز یا ٹریڈیشنل جو اسٹیریو ٹائپس ہیں ان کو بریک کریں وہ چاہے سائز میں ہو وہ چاہے ٹیکنیک میں ہو وہ چاہے مٹیریل میں ہو یا کسی اور فارم میں ہو اس کو بریک کرنے کے بعد جو آرٹ ورک پروڈیوس کیا جائے منیچر میں ہم اس کو کانٹیمپرری آرٹ ورک کہتے ہیں جب ہم فارملزم کی بات کرتے ہیں اور ہم اس ٹریڈیشنل منیچر پہ اپلائی کرتے ہیں یا کنٹیمپرری جو ہمارا آرٹ ورک سلیکٹیڈ ہے ولی اللہ میرانی کا تو ایز اے فارم ایز اے ویژول فارم ایز اے ویژول ایلیمنٹ ویژول ایکسپریشن بہت اچھے طریقے سے ولی اللہ نے اس کو نبھایا ہے اور اس کی تمام بہترین بیلنس کمپوزیشن ہے اور جو میڈیم کا ایکسپریمنٹ ہے منیچر کے ٹریڈیشنل اسٹائل اور ٹریڈیشنل سائز میں رہتے ہوئے بہترین ڈیٹیل ورک کیا ہے اور پلس میں جو اس کی کلر اسکیم ہے اگر ہم کلر کے بات بات کریں تو بیک گراؤنڈ میں جو ایک ٹی واش اس نے لگایا ہے انہوں نے اپلائی کیا ہے دیٹ لکس ویری اٹریکٹیو وتھ بال پوائنٹ ڈیٹیل ورک ان بلو وہ ایک اچھا ایستھیٹیکل ویو دے رہا ہے جو میں پہلے چکر چکا ہوا تھا بعد کہ آرٹ ورک وہ ہوتا ہے جو آپ کے ایستھیٹیکل ایموشنس کو پرووک کرے تو آئی تھنک اس نے وہ جو ہمارے انٹینشنس کو ہمارے فیلنگس کو ٹچ کیا ہے جو آرٹسٹ کمیونیکیٹ کرنا چاہ رہا ہے اور اس میں جو ویژول ایلیمنٹس ہیں جو کلچرلی ریپریزنٹیڈ ہیں جیسے انہوں نے چارپائی یوز کی ہے یا اس میں جو جوٹ یوز کیا ہے اور اس سے بننے والا جو پورٹریٹ جو فگر ہے سائڈ کمپوزڈ اور پلس میں 
اس طرح ویونگ جو ایسٹیٹیکلی بہت زیادہ بہترین ٹچ دے رہا ہے یا اپر سائیڈ پہ جو فگر بنائی گئی ہے بلر دیٹ ریپریزنٹ از لائک جو اس کا ٹاپک ہے کیسلین اس کا ہے آئی تھنک فارم وائز اس نے بہت اچھے ایکسپلین کرنے کی کوشش کی ہے اور فارملزم جو تھیوری ہے یا فارملزم جو اپروچ ہے ہمارے منیچر آرٹ ورک بشمول منیچر آرٹ ورک باقی جتنے بھی آرٹ ورک ہیں وہ بیوٹی ان کی بیوٹی کو ان کی ایکسٹیٹک کو ان کی فارمیشن کو ان کی آرٹسٹک جتنی بھی ڈیٹیل ہیں ان کو ایکسپلین کرنے میں ایولیوٹ کرنے میں اینالائز کرنے میں آئی تھنک ایک کمپیریٹیولی اچھی اور بینیفیشل اپروچ ہے کیوں کہ ہمارے پاکستان میں میجورٹی جو ورک ہیں وہ ڈیزائن بیس ہوتے ہیں ڈیکوریٹیو پرپز کے لیے یوز ہوتے ہیں اور سمپل نیریٹیو ہوتے ہیں کنسیپچول ورک ایز کمپیئر ٹو ویسٹ ہمارے ہاں اتنا زیادہ نہیں ہوا ہے ہمارے ہاں زیادہ تر اب وہ مذہبی انفلوئنس کی وجہ سے یا کلچرل انفلوئنس کی وجہ سے بہت سارے اس میں باتیں بشمول ہیں تو فارملزم اس کے ایستھیٹیکل فارمس کو کنوے کرنے کے لیے ایک بہترین اپروچ ہے تو باقی جو منیچر یا خاص طور پہ جو ولی اللہ میرانی کے جو کام ہیں اس طرح کی جو ایک ایکسپریمنٹیشن ہے پریزنٹیشن ہے وتھ فارملزم دیٹ ول پرووائڈ گڈ پلیٹ فارم ٹو نیو لرنرس اینڈ ریسرچرس اینڈ آرٹ کے ٹیکس ٹو ایولیوٹ ٹو کمپوز نیو آرٹ ورک ان فارم آف سم تھنگ پریزنٹیڈ ایز اے ریپریزنٹیشن ایز اے آئیڈینٹی آف پاکستان آئی تھنک سو دیٹس آل تھینک یو السلام علیکم آئی ایم وجاہت علی فرام فیصل آباد آئی ایم اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر اینڈ ہولڈنگ دا پوزیشن ان ایز انچارج انسٹیٹیوٹ آف آرٹ اینڈ ڈیزائن گورنمنٹ کالج یونیورسٹی فیصل آباد آئی ڈڈ ماسٹرس ان ویژول آرٹس فرام نیشنل کالج آف آرٹس اینڈ بیچلرز آف آنرس ان فائن آرٹس میجر پینٹنگ فرام دا سیم انسٹیٹیوشن آئی ہیو ایٹین ایئرس آف ریسرچ اینڈ ٹیچنگ ایکسپیرینس at Pakistan Institute of Fashion Design and Government College University Faisalabad in the domain of art and design and art educationist. My research interest lies in painting and miniature. I have uh, participated in many exhibitions and published articles in international journals. Well, I belong to the house of artists as I am grand grandson of Ustad Ala Baksh. Being a family member of uh, Ustad Ala Baksh, uh, my major interest uh, in uh, Ustad Ala Baksh paintings and there are many such things in Ustad Ala Baksh work which are unexplored and are very important to know them. And family member of a family بہت ساری ایسی انفارمیشن ہیں جو کہ لوگوں کے ساتھ شیئر نہیں ہوئی جس میں ان کا بہت سارا ایسا کام ہے جو کہ ابھی لوگوں کو ایکسپلور کرنا ہے تو میرا جو میجر انٹرسٹ رہا وہ ان کی پریکٹسز کے اوپر ہے اور وہ پریکٹسز منی ایچر سے ریلیٹڈ بھی ہیں اور دوسرے جو ان کے جو پریکٹسز ہیں ان کو ایکسپلور کرنے میں بھی ہے تو استاد علا بخش نے سینہ بسینہ استادوں سے کام سیکھا اور منیچر کی تعلیم بھی انہوں نے پانچ چھ سال استاد سے لی اور اس منیچر کی تعلیم کا فائدہ ان کو یہ ہوا کہ ان کے کام میں آپ کو ایک ڈیلیکیسی نظر آتی ہے وہ سینسٹیوٹی نظر آتی ہے جو کہ اس ٹائم پیریڈ میں منیچر کے کام میں موجود تھی تو نارملی یہ پریکٹس کی جاتی ہے کہ جب ایک پینٹر کام کر رہا ہوتا ہے تو وہ اس کو ایسا مائنر پڑتا ہے اور ایز پر مائی نالج کے استاد اللہ بخش نے منی ایچر کو کوئی سات آٹھ سال سیکھا استادوں سے 
और उस्ताद से सीखने के बाद उन्होंने उसको अपने काम में शामिल किया और जो उस्ताद अल्लाह बख्श के काम में जो इम्पोर्टेंट फैक्टर है एक तो रिलीजियस कंटेंट भी नज़र आता है आपको कल्चरल कंटेंट भी नज़र आता है माइथोलॉजिकल कंटेंट भी नज़र आता है रोमांटिक कंटेंट भी नज़र आता है तो और बहुत सारी ऐसी बातें हैं जो कि फॉर्मल हवाले से या कॉन्टेक्चुअल हवाले से आपको उनके काम में नज़र आती हैं तो उस्ताद अल्लाह बख्श के काम को अगर आप देखें तो ख़ास तौर पे कल्चरल इन्फ्लुएंस बहुत ज़्यादा था जिसमें हीर रंजा शशि पुन्नू सोनी महीवाल शीरी फहरात और लिटरेचर से रिलेटेड बहुत सारी इन्फॉर्मेशन मौजूद थी जिसमें आपके पास कल्चरल पेंटिंग्स भी आपको नज़र आती हैं जिसमें पंजाब में उस टाइम पीरियड में जो लोगों का रहना सहना था वो किस तरह का था वो किस तरह की ड्रेसिंग पहनते थे वो किस तरह की ओकेजनली शादियों पे या त्यौहारों पे किस तरह के कॉस्ट्यूम्स का इस्तेमाल करते थे और इस तरह की बहुत सारी रसूमात थी जो कि अब नापैद हो चुकी हैं वो उस्ताद अल्लाह बख्श की काम की फॉर्म में डॉक्यूमेंट हुई मेरा मेजर कंसर्न है और जो मेरा जो टॉपिक है जिस पे मैं बात करना चाहता हूँ वो है रिवाइविंग द लेगेसी एक्सप्लोरिंग द आर्टिस्टिक एंड कल्चरल सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ उस्ताद अल्लाह बख्श पेंटिंग इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ साउथ एशियन आर्ट इस टॉपिक के हवाले से uh, मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि जी उस्ताद अल्लाह बख्श के काम uh, में कुछ ऐसी कुछ ऐसी चीज़ें हैं जो कि साउथ एशियन आर्ट में बहुत कम आपको मिलती हैं जिसमें जिस तरह से हमारा ये एक टॉपिक है जिसमें आप एक ब्यूटी को डिफ़ाइन करना है किसी ना किसी हवाले से तो बहुत सारे पेंटर्स ने काम किया इस सब कॉन्टिनेंट में लेकिन एक उस्ताद अल्लाह बख्श के काम में जो एक चीज़ मुझे मुनफरद नज़र आई उन सारे पेंटर्स में वो करेक्टराइजेशन थी जो कि किसी एक सब कॉन्टिनेंट के पेंटर ने सबसे पहले की जिसमें हीर रंजा का एक करेक्टर था जिसमें हीर रंजा को एज एन लिटरेचर में तो पढ़ा गया लेकिन हीर को किस तरह से विजुअल फॉर्म में एक पेंटर ने दिखाया जिसमें उसके जो फीचर्स हैं उसका जो हेयर स्टाइल है उसकी जो ड्रेसिंग है और इसी तरह से रंझा का भी गेटअप डिज़ाइन किया गया और एक पेंटर के लिए जो सबसे बड़ी चीज़ होती है वो यही होती है कि वो चीज़ों को क्रिएट करने वाला हो तो उस्ताद अल्लाह बख्श के काम में आपको ये चीज़ बहुत कसरत में नज़र आती है कि उन्होंने बहुत सारे करेक्टर्स को तश्ल दिया और उनके काम में आपको अगर आप माइथोलॉजिकल काम भी देखें तो आपको माँ महाभारता के सीन नज़र आते हैं और आपको जो उस टाइम पीरियड में गीता से रिलेटेड जो चीज़ें थी जो जो फाइट्स थी और जो उनके कृष्णा का करेक्टर था और उनकी जो गॉडेस थी उनको पेंट किया उस्ताद अल्लाह बख्श ने तो उस्ताद अल्लाह बख्श के काम सिर्फ रोमांटिसिज्म पे नहीं था उन्होंने वॉर के सीन्स भी पेंट किए और इसी तरह से जो जो ब्यूटी थी उनके काम में और उनकी फॉर्म में Uh, मुझे लगता है कि वो उस टाइम में जो एक फीमेल का फिगर था और जो फीमेल की शर्म होती थी और जो उसका जो एक ट्रेडिशनली जो सोसाइटी उसको एक प्लेटफॉर्म देती है कि आपने किस तरह से दिखना है और जो कस्टम्स हैं हम लोगों के वो उनके उनकी फिगर्स में और उनके काम में आपको बहुत साता नज़र आते हैं तो जो जो खूबसूरती थी वो उनकी फॉर्म में आपको नज़र आई तो इसी तरह से जो मेरी रिसर्च के जो इम्पॉर्टेंट एलिमेंट्स हैं और जो हाइलाइट्स हैं जिसमें 
distance between the hidden and unexposed work of Ustad Alabaksh. Now, this is the case that there is a lot of work that is in many collectors and in that period, people have bought and we have a lot of work in the market that is either in art galleries or in a permanent museum. So, what is the case of this case? 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 उनके इमेजेस को सामने लाया जाए ताकि लोगों को ज़्यादा काम देखने का मौका मिला और जो जो काम इंटरनेशनली ट्रैवल कर गया है उनसे कांटेक्ट किया जाए और उन उन उस उनके काम को कंपाइल किया जाए और जो सेकंड है कि नॉन प्रॉपर एजुकेशन रिगार्डिंग आ आर्ट ऑफ उस्ताद अलाबक्ष इसके अंदर इसी तरह से है कि जब आप उस्ताद अलाबक्ष के काम को देखते हैं तो Technically, in that time period, there was no art training in that time period. There were no institutions in that time period. And the Ustad has learned as much as he has learned from his own work. And he has learned from his own time periods. In which there is an innocence in the work. And in which we have a proper scientific way of the institutions. استعمال کرنا اور مینوپلیٹ کرنا سکھاتے ہیں تو وہ انوسنس کہیں نہ کہیں ہم استاد کے کام میں مجود ہے اسی طرح سے جو مین منوپلی تھی اس ٹائم پیریڈ میں آرٹ کاؤنسلز کی اور جو جتنے بھی دیگر ادارے ہیں آرٹ کے جو کہ آرٹس کو پرموٹ کرتے ہیں تو بیسکلی بہت سارا ایسا کیٹلوگ کی فارم میں یا بہت سارا ایسا ڈیٹا جو کہ آرٹ کاؤنسلز کے پاس ہے اور وہ بھی انپبلیش ہے اور لوگوں کو کم دیکھنے کا موقع ملا ہے میری ریسرچ میں جو سٹیٹمنٹ آف پرابلم ہے اور جو ریسرچ کوئیسنز ہیں جیسے کہ ہاؤ دو ورک آف استاد اللہ بکش چینج تھرو دی ٹائم Uh, my second question, uh, when uh, was the tag as a craftsman and later began to be quoted as uh, an artist? My third uh, uh, question is why are some certain common images quoted in many research rapidly? And my fourth uh, question is uh, how will Ustad Alabaksh uh, work be combined in one single platform? Uh, my last question is, uh, what were his idea, concept and vision? There is a lot of research that is in a picture form, in an interview form, or in a personal conversation. I have met all the people that I have met with. باتیں ہوئی ہیں جو کہ استاد کی لائف کے بارے میں استاد کے کام کے بارے میں آپ کو بتاتے ہیں بہت سارا ایسا کام ہے جو کہ آلڈی بہت سارے ہسٹورینز نے اپنی اپنی جگہوں پر لکھا ہے جن کو میں نے ریویو کی ہے اس کے اندر جیسے ماسل اشرانڈی ہیں ڈاکٹر اکبر نکوی ہیں میاں جاز اللہ حسن ہیں ڈاکٹر مسارت حسن ہیں جنہوں نے مختلف ہے پہلوں کو جاگر کیا استاد کا جس میں ڈاکٹر اکبر نکوی نے کافی ڈیٹیل میں لکھا استاد کی پریکٹسز کے بارے میں اور استاد کے میکسیمم ایمیجز کو اڈریس کیا گیا اس کے اندر اسی طرح سے ڈاکٹر مسارت حسن کی کتاب ہے پینٹنگ ان پنجاب پلینز اس کے اندر جو کہ پنجاب کے اس ٹائم پیریڈ میں جو ٹریڈیشنلی استاد سینہ بسینہ سیکھتے ہوئے آ رہے تھے ان کا ایک ٹائم فریم ہے ہوفلی ان دی اینڈ میرا جو ٹاپک ہے وہ لوگوں کو ایک استاد کا نیا پہلو دیکھنے کا موقع دے گا اور جس طرح سے ویسٹ میں ویسٹ ہسٹورینز پراپر طریقے سے ایک آرٹس کو ڈاکومنٹ کرتے ہیں تو میری بھی کوشش ہوگی کہ استاد کے کام کو اسی طرح سے امپورٹنس دی جائے ڈاکومنٹ کیا جائے اور ہماری جو ریسرچ ہے وہ آنے والی یوت کے لیے 
एक इंफॉर्मेशन के तौर पे सामने आए थैंक यू Assalamu alaikum my name is Dana Lawan and I am a student of MPhil Art History at GCU Lahore I have graduated last year from Punjab University College of Art and Design with my major in painting I am super excited to be a part of this conference that is the beauty of form in Pakistani art My topic is the mesmerizing beauty of Mughis Riyaz landscape Mughis Riyaz is a well known Pakistani painter he is known for his landscapes portraits and figurative paintings if we look at the theme of our conference that is the beauty of form in pakistani art we see a word form so basically first question that should arise in our mind is what is a form the form is basically refers to the physical and visual representation of the of anything before starting and going into the depth we should know about the formalism that what formalism actually is we look uh, around ourselves we see many different things and everything has its specific form and shape so formalism is a term that deals with the visual representation of an artwork in which we see texture its size its shape and medium so these things are related to the formalism formal we find formalism in the many other aspects as well like in literature in music and religion as well formalism has played an important role throughout the history of art it gives an understanding of the physical visual representation of the painting or any other piece of art it may be sculpture or print making before going into the depths of formalism we must know the meaning of formalism that what formalism actually is so formalism uh, is a terminology that defines its form its size uh, shape and textures colors composition all of these things are included in the formalism so why formalism is important i have an answer for this in that once i appreciated someone's painting in front of my teacher and he asked me what is uh, beautiful in it so i said the whole painting he asked me tell me specifically what you saw beautiful in it and what is appealing for you and i had no answer so at that time i came to know that formalism is that much important in the field of art so before going into that depth and themes meanings of the painting of or any other artwork one must should know about the visual representation of the painting or visual that what uh, we see in it the composition theme and colors its size and how the artist composed all of the elements in the painting i think the first question that comes to our mind whenever we see an artwork is its uh, concept and its theme so according to me it's a little bit earlier to question on the theme so first question should be according regarding its form shape its size and what medium the artist has used i remember my teacher used to say that uh, whenever you want to see an artwork with a good impact you should see it with a distance of minimum 4 to 5 now in the picture you can see the artwork of mughis riyaz is landscape painting depicting river ravi that is near the shadra town i have been a great admirer of his paintings uh, from the beginning of my studies my love for the nature drove me to analyze this beautiful piece of artwork the elements he uses in the painting are eye catching for any viewer in the world full of hustle and fast life these kind of painting give a player uh, emotionally to a uh, to the audience the depiction of river ravi and a cow sitting in the middle is remarkable and uh, a cow a crow sitting on it and both are facing in opposite directions all of it and the negative space of a landscape the whole composition fits in the canvas very gracefully and the use of dull pastel colors 
it all gave it a feeling of uh, serenity and silence in this artwork we can see a visual representation of a dry river and a crow resting on the ground along with the river the artwork uh, shows the earth can be seen in muddy brown and ginger colors but in the sky we can see dull colors and no highlight is shown on the other hand the ground has highlights with brown and yellowish colors which is different from the sky faded trees are can be seen in the horizon and their shadow in the water are also not very sharp due to the foggy environment i can assume that it's a evening of winter season with the with its calmness and we can also see uh, two crows uh, th that are sitting alongside the river balancing the lower composition of the painting the most important part in the painting is its composition 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 should be managed very gracefully as in this painting we can see uh, the crows uh, sitting alongside the river they are very beautifully balancing the lower composition of the painting while on the other side on the other side the upper portion can be seen with the empty and with the vastness of the sky so this is how we can analyze a painting in the light of formalism before going into the depth so it gives an uh, insight of the painting that how an artist is using its uh, techniques and its style of painting to show his uh, emotions and express his feelings through the brush thank you The forms in Pakistani art has rich and diverse aesthetic characteristic that set it unique and distinct from other global art forms. As a growing art form in Pakistan, visual comics is a relatively less recognized than other traditional art styles. To appreciate it through formal analysis, this research focuses on the work of an internationally recognized artist honored with pride of performance and won the title master puppeteer from unicef in 1997 farooq kasar also known as ankit sargam in pakistani art his contributions are undoubtedly triad i am doreen arshad currently serving as a lecturer in animation department of institute for art and culture as a phd scholar in institute of global and historical studies gc university i am honored to present in this virtual conference entitled formal analysis of visual language of comics a contemporary art by farooq kasar to shape up the pakistani art form of comics under the main title beauty of form in pakistani art Serving from last eight years as an illustrator and digital artist in the field of game and animation design, when this proposal introduced, I could not ignore the Farooq Kasar's visual art form of comic, which is the blend of traditional and modern visual narratives within the vernacular setting of Pakistan. Comic art is a unique form of visual storytelling that relies on a combination of visual elements such as illustration. panel layouts and typography to convey a narrative through different styles mediums and themes the history of the visual language of comic art in pakistan is rich and diverse with influences from traditional art forms cultural narratives and global comic traditions pakistani comic artists adopted this art form in the 20th century from western comic traditions Urdu dyers played a crucial role in popularizing illustrated stories and comics in Pakistan during the 1960s and 1970s. Artists like Aziz Ahmed, Sayyed Iqbal Hussain and Masood Ahmed were prominent contributors to Urdu dyers blending traditional storytelling with visual elements. The 1980s and the 1990s is the emergence of local comic characters often with a focus on humor and social commentary. 
artists like Naseem Hijazi and Akhtar Siddiqui contributed to this trend. Kachi Kahiya by Azhar Javed and Gogi by Arif were among the popular comic strips during this period, reflecting a mix of humor and societal observations. The 1990s and 2000s witnessed the rise of satirical comics that address social and political issues. Artists like Farooq Kaiser gained popularity with characters like Uncle Sagam in various medium including television and comics. Farooq Kaiser's visual comics stand as a distinctive and culturally significant Pakistani art form, representing a unique blend of humor, satire and social commentary. Kaiser, best known for creating the iconic character Uncle Sagam, employed a distinctive drawing style that combines simplicity with expressive caricature. The characters characterized by exaggerated features and vibrant personalities became symbolic representation of societal archetypes. His panel layouts exhibited a thoughtful approach to pacing using both traditional grid structures and unconventional arrangements to enhance comedic timing. His use of color when applied often carried thematic significance, contributing to the visual impact of his narratives. The typography and lettering in Kess's comic displayed creativity, emphasizing the intricacies of language and dialogue. Embedded within the humor of his comics was a keen social commentary that resonated with Pakistani audiences addressing cultural nonsense and social and societal issues. Though this art form is influenced from West, but the visual elements of Western and Pakistani comic art exhibit distinctions rooted in cultural, artistic and storytelling traditions. Western comic art, particularly in mainstream American comics, tend to emphasize dynamic and realistic illustrations, intricate detailing and a strong focus on superhero genres. Artists often employ shading of color techniques to create a visually impactful and immersive experience. On the other hand, Pakistani visual comic art often draw inspirations from the country's rich cultural tapestry. It may showcase a few of traditional artistic motifs, vibrant colors, and a narrative style deeply rooted in local folklore and societal issues. Pakistani comic artists frequently integrate elements of calligraphy and intricate patterns, infusing a distinct cultural flavor into their work. While Western comic art often prioritizes a global and modern aesthetic, Pakistani comic art frequently weaves a narrative that reflects the diverse and historical aspects of the region, providing a unique visual storytelling experience. In conclusion, the modern forms in Pakistani art are boundless, open and free of stereotypes. It is adaptable and secular within its religious and cultural boundaries. In order to achieve international standards, Pakistani artists continue, continuously inventions in Pakistani art forms. In Brazil, international recognition and appreciation of Pakistani art forms are increasing. Hello, I'm Aisha Yusuf, and I'm really honored to be a part of this conference. Currently, I'm enrolled in PhD program uh, in Art History at Institute of Historical and Global Studies at Government College, University Lahore. And at the same institution, I'm also serving as a lecturer. Today, I will be presenting my paper titled as uh, Beyond Boundaries, Unveiling the Universal Beauty in Pakistani Art Through Formalism. In this paper, I argue that Pakistani art portrays beauty and universal appeal that transcends the cultural boundaries without the need to understand the broader socio-political context and cultural influences on it. And I have applied formalism theory to analyze the elements and principles of beauty in different paintings produced by Pakistani artists after 1947. My paper examines various forms and styles of paintings by famous artists such as Zubeda Aga, Shakir Ali, 
and Iqbal Hussain, uh, but mainly I will be focusing on the painting of Zubeda Agha, which is titled as Evening. Uh, I have explored that how these artists use elements such as shape, line, color and texture to create the significant form to, and to arouse aesthetic emotions in the viewers. Uh, one does not need any uh, cultural background or context to understand these paintings. My paper also draws parallels between the Pakistani works and other global art traditions demonstrating the universal principles of beauty uh, embedded in Pakistani art. The objective of this paper is to understand and to appreciate the skills, beauty and creativity of Pakistani artists within the framework of formalism and to contribute to the global discourse on art and aesthetics. I will use Clive Bell's idea of significant form as the main criteria for evaluating the artistic value and quality of these paintings. According to Clive Bell, significant form is the unique combination of lines, shapes and colors in a work of art that evokes a particular emotional response in the viewer. He believed that certain arrangement of these formal elements possesses an intrinsic quality that can produce aesthetic emotions. For Bell, aesthetic emotions are the feelings or experiences that arise when we encounter significant form in art. He argued that these emotions are universal and transcend the cultural and historical context. According to Bell, the artist's role is to create compositions that embody significant form Allowing, allowing the viewers to experience the aesthetic emotions associated with it. In my paper, I argue that idea of Clive Bell when applied to the paintings made by the Pakistani artists makes, they make their work more universal and allows the audience to understand its beauty without any need to know the context of these paintings. This approach signifies that the work of Pakistani artists can be understood beyond cultural and regional differences by focusing on the formal elements that elicit aesthetic emotions I explored that one could identify a universal standard of beauty that applies to various art forms across the different cultures. This approach suggests that there is a common shared human response to certain visual arrangements irrespective of the specific cultural context in which the art is created. Zubeda Aka, a pioneering Pakistani modernist artist, created paintings that can be appreciated in the global context when examined through a formalistic approach. Let's formally analyze her painting evening. Aha was the pioneer of the modern art in Pakistan. Her paintings reflect abstract work with the bright colors. She was also known as the colorist artist of the Pakistan. I have chosen Aha's work for this uh, uh, presentation as she painted the object's ideas instead of the object's reality and captured the attention of the viewers through her selection of colors and forms. The medium utilized for this painting was oil on canvas, on canvas, and the painting does not uh, have any specific deviant for the figures in it. At first glance, we can look at the long brush strokes used to use to paint the idea of the buildings and give a city view. The base color of this painting is black, and orange red colored buildings are drawn against the slack of surface. These buildings are heightened and the yellow round and square figures in them are the windows of the buildings. These windows look yellow because of the lights inside the buildings. Small flies are in the air with the blue and the pink color. It includes different figurative uh, forms and built forms and natural forms as well. Uh, on the bottom right, we can see owl and the parrot forms and in the center, we can see flies. At the bottom, we can see shades of trees painted in the black. These figures are not prominent and defined and, and well defined. But if we keep looking at the figure, it starts appearing in front of the eye. 
All these figures are deformed as we see in Picasso's style, a dark and bright color combination is used. Green, orange, red, black, blue, and yellow colors are prominent and identify the different figures. Since the title is evening, the use of black color is for the dark shady areas and yellow in most figures is light. To analyze or see this painting through formalist approach, we need to see the effect of these details on an overall image of the painting. The color combination appears to be the most significant tool of this painting, which in yellow in most figures is light. To analyze or see this painting through formalist approach, we need to see the effect of these details on an overall image of the painting. The color combination appears to be the most significant tool of this painting, which catches the viewer's attention at first glance. The second most significant element of this painting is deformed figures in the different shapes. The combination of colors, light and forms set the tone and mood of the painting and make it a focus of the viewer. It gives a feeling of calmness and serenity to the viewer. Although it appears as if the artist has painted a city evening life, it allows the viewer to experience different aesthetic emotions. Zubeda Aga's painting often display a mastery of these elements and creating a visual language that can be universally appreciated. Um, her use of the bold colors and dynamic composition, the expressive lines uh, contributes to the enduring appeal of her work across the cultural boundaries. Aga's engagement with abstract expressionism, a movement with the global significance is evident in her work. The emphasis on spontaneous and emotive brush stroke uh, as well as the exploration of the form and color of their own sake aligns with the principles of abstract expressionism that emerged in the mid 20th century. This connection uh, allows us to see her paintings and allows her paintings to be a part of the larger, larger uh, international conversation in the art world. While rooted in her Pakistani heritage, Zubeda Aga's art reflects a synthesis of diverse influences. Her exposure to the Western art during her studies in the Europe and her subsequent incorporation of these influences into her work shows a cross-cultural exchange. This cultural amalgamation contributes to the global relevance of her paintings, transcending geographical and cultural confines. The formal analysis of this painting allows us to focus on the emotional impact of this artwork. Aga's painting often convey a sense of emotion and energy through her use of color and expressive brush strokes. Aga's exploration of universal themes such as the human condition, spirituality, and nature gives her work a timeless quality. By tapping into these themes that resonates across cultures, her painting maintained their relevance beyond regional and cultural contexts. This emotional resonance can be understood and appreciated by viewers globally, irrespective of their cultural background. Zubeda Aga's contribution to modernist art in the Pakistan have influenced subsequent generations of artists globally. Her formalistic approach, uh, marked by experimentation and a departure from the traditional norms, has left an indelible mark on the evolution of art, making her work a source of inspiration for artists around the world. In conclusion, Zubeda Aga's painting remains relevant in the global context through a formalistic approach due to the universal appeal of their formal elements, engagement with the abstract expressionism, cultural synthesis, emotional resonance, exploration of the timeless themes and influence on the contemporary art. Her art serves as a testament to the transcendent power of visual language and the capacity of the paintings to communicate across the diverse cultural landscapes. In the end, uh, we have analyzed and I will conclude that the formalistic lens when applied to Pakistani art particularly through the notable works of artists like Aga, 
served as a powerful tool for unveiling the beauty and universal appeal embedded in these creations. And by embracing the Clive Bell's concept of significant form as the criteria for the evaluation, this paper has demonstrated that the aesthetic emotions evoked by the elements such as line, color, shape, texture in Pakistani paintings can transcend the cultural boundaries. The exploration of Zubeda Agha's painting, Evening, exemplifies how her formalistic approach, marked by the bold colors, expressive brush strokes, and a synthesis of the cultural influences, contributes to the enduring relevance and global appreciation of her work. Zubeda Agha's legacy not only reflects the richness of Pakistani modernist art, but also underscores the universal language that art speaks transcending the geographical and cultural confines. As her paintings continue to inspire and resonate with audiences worldwide, they stand as a testament to enduring power of formalism in fostering a global discourse on art and aesthetics. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Ruba Babar and I am an art historian. I am currently serving as a lecturer textile design at Lahore College for Women University, Lahore. Today I am going to talk about the beauty of form in Pakistani art. Uh, the topic uh, of my presentation is clay pottery as a traditional art form in Pakistan. The contents I am going to talk about are historical roots of clay pottery, cultural significance, techniques and process, variety of forms in clay pottery, artistic elements, master artisans, eco-friendly and sustainability, challenges and preservation of this traditional art form and finally I will conclude. Historical roots Clay pottery in Pakistan is a testament to the country's rich cultural heritage traditional techniques and historical roots. Dating back over 5000 years, the origin of this art form can be traced to the Indus Valley civilization where archaeologists have unearthed pottery that serves as a testament to the enduring nature of this beautiful art form. Cultural significance. Distinct regions in Pakistan have distinct pottery styles that, that reflect their cultural identity. For example, Multani blue pottery is known for its unique patterns, while Hala pottery from Sindh is recognized for its vibrant colors and geometrical designs. Techniques and process. The specific techniques used in crafting clay pottery vary across regions from the choice of clay to the method of glazing and firing. These techniques are passed down through generations, preserving the distinctiveness of each area's cultural expressions. The traditional methods employed by Pakistani potters today are also borrowed from the past. The potter's wheels, a fundamental tool, remains central to the process. Hand coiling and slab building techniques passed down through generations add diversity to the forms created. Variety of forms and artistic elements Pakistan's diverse cultural landscape is reflected in the myriad styles of clay pottery found across the country. From the vibrant blue pottery of Multan to the earthy hues of Tharparkar's terracotta, each region boosts its distinctive aesthetic. The intricate geometric patterns of Sindh Hala poetry and the floral motifs of Punjabi poetry contribute to the beauty of form in Pakistani art. Artisans infuse their creations with symbolic motifs that pay homage to Pakistan's rich traditions. Islamic geometric patterns, Mughal-inspired designs, and representations of local flora and fauna adorn the surfaces of these clay masterpieces narrating stories of the land and its people. Master Artisans uh, Rahmatullah Mughal, a skilled potter from Multan known for his intricate blue pottery. Second is Nuruddin Ahmad, 
renowned for his work in the traditional poetry of Hala Sindh. Third is Sindhyar Makhdoom. He belongs to a family of famous Hala Kashigars. He makes poetry and handmade gift items infused with Kashikari. He received foreign education and returned back to his town to continue doing his part in reviving the art of Kashikari. Hassan Kashigar Hassan Kashigar belongs from Nasirpur, won a full scholarship to National College of Arts, Lahore and now runs his own workshop where he is experimenting with new designs with his handmade craft. Hassan is the ninth generation of his family into this line of work. Eco-friendly nature and sustainability of clay pottery. Clay pottery is biodegradable. Clay products are naturally biodegradable, meaning they break down over time without harming the environment. Minimal chemicals are used in the production of clay products, often involves fewer synthetic chemicals compared to some industrial materials. This reduces the introduction of harmful substances into the environment. Local craftsmanship and economy. Clay pottery is often crafted by local artisans, promoting sustainable livelihoods with, uh, within communities. Supporting local craftsmanship helps maintain cultural traditions and reduces the environmental impact associated with mass production and transportation. Health benefits. Clay has natural cooling properties, making it ideal for certain kitchen wear. Traditional clay cookware like earthen pots retains moisture and allows for slow even cooking which can enhance the nutritional value of food and reduce the need for additional cooking aids. Cultural preservation. Embracing the clay products in daily life supports cultural traditions and local craftsmanship. This sustainable practice ensures the continuation of age-old techniques and art forms. Challenges and preservations. Clay pottery in Pakistan as a bridge between the past and the present embodying the resilience and adaptability of cultural traditions. However, the traditional pottery of Pakistan faces challenges. Mass produced at alternatives and contemporary designs pose threats to the survival of this ancient art form. To conclude, I will say uh, the creation and use of clay pottery often involve community collaboration. Artisans working with traditional techniques foster a sense of community identity and the shared rituals strengthen the cultural fabric of the region. Clay pottery in traditional Pakistani rituals not only serves practical purposes but also act as a powerful cultural symbol. The diversity in styles and techniques reflect the rich and varied cultural identity of different regions across the country. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Sayyid Ali Ijaz. I am a government college university in the Institute of Global and Historical Studies. I am a PhD scholar. In today's virtual conference, my presentation is the exquisite and intricate beauty for features, motifs, and patterns in Pakistani art. बचपन में एक कहानी अक्सर मैं सुना करता था अपनी ग्रैंड मदर के साथ और वो अक्सर जब मैंने परेशान होना या रोना बचपन में तो वो कहानी सुनाया करती थी कि आओ मैं आपको सड़क पर लेकर चलूं और वहां मैं तुम्हें दिखाती हूं कि परियां उड़ती हैं ये बात मेरे लिए बहुत अचंभे की थी बहुत छूती थी कि परियां उड़ती तो हैं मगर नजर कैसे आती हैं और वो मैं अक्सर उनसे ये सवाल करता था तो वो जब ये सवाल करता वो अब वो मुझे सड़क के किनारे ले जाती हैं और वहाँ पे खड़े हो गए जो ट्रक्स थे या अक्सर जो गुजर रहे होते थे और वो दिखाते थे वो देखो वो परी जा रही है 
तब शायद हमारा जो इंटेलेक्ट था इतनी समझ थी वो इतनी बालिग नहीं थी इस चीज़ से वाकिफ हो नहीं सके लेकिन जैसे जैसे बड़े हुए वो बाद में पता चला कि वो ट्रक आर्ट है जहाँ पे मुख्त किस्म के बोटिक्स को पोट्रेचर्स को मुख्त कल्चर के पैटर्नस को और उनके कल्चर के मुताबिक चीज़ों को पेंट किया जाता है जो कि आज की मेरी मतलब इस पेपर का या इस कॉन्फ्रेंस में प्रजेंटेशन का उनवान भी है अब आगे बढ़ने से पहले सबसे पहले ये सवाल ज़रूर जहन में आता होगा कि मैं इस ही सर्च पर प्रजेंट क्यों कर रहा हूँ इसकी इम्पोर्टेंस क्या है तो इसकी इम्पोर्टेंस दरअसल ये है ये सर्व करती है एज अ विंडो पाकिस्तान की कल्चरल और आर्टिस्टिक रिचनेस के बारे में ये हमें पाकिस्तान के मुख्तलिफ कल्चर के मोटिवस पैटर्न सिम्बोलिज़म और उनके एम्बेड वर्क के बारे में डीप अंडरस्टैंडिंग देती है ट्रक आर्ट ट्रक आर्ट पाकिस्तान के मुख्तलिफ कोनों के रीजनल सोशल और हिस्टोरिकल इन्फ्लुंस को अनवेल करती है डिसाइफर करती है बेनकाब करती है मतलब उनसे नकाब को सरकाती है और उसके बाद एनालाइज करती है इवॉल्विंग नेचर ऑफ कल्चरल एक्सप्रेशन इन द कंटेम्प्रेरी सोसाइटी के मतलब हम असर सोसाइटी में हम असर माशरे में या मौजूदा माशरे में किस तरीके के कल्चरल एक्सप्रेशन का इरतका हो रहा है उनमें किस तरह की जिद्दत आ रही है वो किस तरीके के असर को अपनी जात में जज्ब कर रहे हैं मेरे आज के पेपर के चार रिसर्च क्वेश्चन हैं जो कि दर्ज झैल हैं पहला How do different types of lines such as spine, bold, intricate play a role convey the artistic aesthetic appeal in Pakistani art? Mera dusra sawal hai in what ways do the variations in texture, shape and color schemes in Pakistani art form a cohesive visual language that reflects cultural symbols, traditional motifs, regional influences? What is the significance of texture in Pakistani art, and how does the use of various textures enhance the overall visual expression experience for the observer? Mera aakhri sawal hai. How do the artistic elements in Pakistani truck art reflect the diverse landscapes and environments encountered as trucks travel through different regions of Pakistan? Ab meri research ke baare mein. या इससे मुतल रिसर्च के बारे में जो मेरा टॉपिक है लिटरेचर क्या कहता है ट्रक आर्ट जो है जमाल इलियास और दुरिया काजी स्किम एना जो हैं वो ट्रक आर्ट को पाकिस्तानी वर्ल्ड ऑफ पाकिस्तानी डेकोरेशन कहते हैं और उसकी फिजिकल ब्यूटी और वाइब्रेंसी ऑफ कलर्स के बारे में बात करते हैं और कहते हैं कि ये पाकिस्तानी सोसाइटी में फोक कल्चर उसकी वेल्थ और रिचनेस और फिजिकल रिचनेस के बारे में हमें बताते जमाल रियास मजीद इस बात का दावा करते हैं मजीद इस बात पर जोर देते हैं कि ट्रक आर्ट आर्टिजनल कल्चर देवदात फाटक विश्वास जी दास रतन कुमार रॉय जो ट्रक आर्ट को एज विजुअल ऑफ सऊदी एशियन कल्चर के इसके बारे में बात करते हैं कि ये कहते हैं कि जो ट्रक आर्ट है ये सऊदी एशियन कल्चर की दरअसल विजुअल एक्सप्रेशन हैं लेकिन ये सियासत को भी उसके साथ डिस्कस करते हैं जो कि हमारे पेपर का जिससे अफिल वक्त ताल्लुक नहीं है उसके बाद अतीका अली जो कि आर्ट हिस्टोरियन हैं वो टॉक्स कंसेंसोली प्रैक्सिस ऑफ आर्ट्स एंड आर्ग्यूज हाउ आर्ट्स ऑर्गेनाइज एंड फोर द सोसाइटीज टूगेदर फोक आर्ट के जो आर्टिस्ट और हिस्टोरियंस हैं वो इसको एंशन टाइम को मॉडर्न टाइम्स के साथ ब्रिज करने का इनके दरमियान रिलेशन जो है तलाश करते हैं और वो बुनियादी तौर पर इसके अंदर कम्यूनल कल्चर और आइडेंटिटी को तलाश करने की कोशिश करते हैं अगर हम ओवरव्यू पाकिस्तानी ट्रक आर्ट का देखें तो ये पाकिस्तानी ट्रक आर्ट जो कि कलोनियल टाइम्स में ब्रेडफोर्ड बैट, ब्रेडफोर्ड के ट्रक यहाँ पर सामान और गुड्स की ट्रांसपोर्टेशन के लिए आना शुरू हुए तो उनके साथ ही ये ट्रक आर्ट ने पाकिस्तान में नफूज किया और उसके ऊपर मुख्तफ किस्म के कल्चरल और मुख्तफ किस्म के मोटिव्स और पैटर्न्स बनना शुरू हुए पाकिस्तान की आज़ादी के बाद जिसे हम आर्ट ऑन व्हील्स भी कहते हैं ये यक नाम इसने बूम और बूस्ट हासिल हुई 
کیونکہ کہا جاتا ہے ہسٹوڈینس کا کہنا ہے کہ بعض مطلب مصورین کو یا فریس کو آرٹسٹس کو وہ کام نہیں مل رہا تھا تو انہوں نے پاکستانی ٹرک آرٹ کو یا ٹرکس کو سجانا شروع کر دیا جس کی وجہ سے یہ اقدام بہت زیادہ نفوذ کی اور اس کے نفوذ کرنے کی یہ ایک تقسیم کے بعد کی وجہ بتائی جاتی ہے افغان وار کے دوران پاکستانی ٹرک آرٹ جو تھی پورے ملک میں پھیلی اور سعود ایشیا ٹرک آرٹ کی وجہ سے کسی حد تک پہچانا بھی گیا اور اس نے اس میں مختلف قسم کے تھیمس تھے جو اوریجنیٹ ہوئے میں نے اپنے پیپر کے لیے حیدر علی کا کام کو اٹھایا ہے حیدر علی جو کہ پاکستانی ٹرک آرٹسٹ ہیں ان کی مطلب پینٹنگس کے ذریعے مطلب ان کی ٹرک آرٹ کے ذریعے ان چیزوں کو اس کی فزیکل فیچرس کو شیپس کو فارملزم کی تھیری کے تحت پڑھنے کی میں نے کوشش کی ہے جیسا کہ ابھی ان باتوں کا ذکر ہو چکا ہے یہ میرا ایک پیٹرن ہے نمونہ ہے ٹرک آرٹ کا اگر میں اسے فارملزم کے ذریعے اس کے اسٹائل کلر کمپوزیشن مٹیریل اسکیل اسپیس اور ٹیکسچر کی بات کر سکتا ہوں اور وہ ہمیں اس میں نظر آ رہی ہیں کہ یہ ایک بالکل میتھولوجیکل تصویر ہے جو جس کو ٹرک آرٹ کو مطلب اس میتھولوجیکل پکچر کے ذریعے ڈپکٹ کرنے کی کوشش کی گئی ہے اس کے اسٹائل کو اگر دیکھا جائے تو یہ اسٹائل ہمیں ایک بالکل مطلب میتھولوجیکل نظر آ رہا ہے اور بہت ہی زیادہ وائبرنسی آف کلرز نظر آ رہی ہے اور اس میں بھی واٹر کلر نظر آ رہا ہے واٹر کلر کی مختلف کلرز کے ساتھ کمپوزیشن ہے اور میٹیریل یہ ایک لوہے کی مطلب جو ہے سختی کے اوپر بنایا گیا ہے اور اس کا ٹیکسچر جو ہے وہ بہت اسموتھ تھا واٹر کلرز کی وجہ سے مطلب بنا ہوا نظر آ رہا ہے اور بالکل اب اگر آگے دیکھا جائے تو یہ بھی ایک بالکل مختلف فلورل اور فانل ڈیزائن کے اندر ٹرکس کو سجا ہوا دکھایا گیا ہے اور ٹرکس کے اوپر مختلف قسم کے تھیمس کو ڈپکٹ کیا گیا ہے اور یہی آج کی مطلب اس کانفرنس میں میری پریزنٹیشن کا عنوان تھا پاکستانی ٹرک آرٹ میں حیدر علی کے کام کو پیش کرنا السلام علیکم لسنرز مائی نیم از تانیہ جعفر امام اینڈ آئی ایم بورن اینڈ بروٹ اپ ان کراچی مائی اپ برنگنگ فاسٹرڈ انٹرسٹ اینڈ اویئرنیس ان ویژول آرٹس اینڈ دس لیٹ می ٹو پرسو مائی ڈگری ان انڈسٹریل ڈیزائن پروڈکٹ ڈیزائن ایز اے میجر ایٹ دا ڈپارٹمنٹ آف ویژول اسٹڈیز یونیورسٹی آف کراچی کرنٹلی آئی ایم ہولڈنگ اے پوزیشن آف اسسٹنٹ پروفیسر ایٹ دا سیم ڈپارٹمنٹ Uh, today I am uh, going to present my uh, paper uh, on applying formalism to Pakistani art form and uh, what a good way to start my paper with uh, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Uh, this is the line by uh, John Keats poem. Now I am going to introduce uh, to you what formalism is. Uh, the theory of formalism allows you to analyze any art form in its aesthetic wisdom. Formalism focuses on the art form in its true physical state uh, and addresses the visual elements such as line and its quality, color and contrast, composition uh, in the frame and focuses uh, on the essential elements of art. It talks about the techniques used to produce uh, any art form. Uh, formalism uh, in art completely ignores the historical and social context and any symbolic uh, value involves uh, bringing into being any art form. Uh, the visual and technical uh, arrangements of elements of art and design uh, such as line, color, texture, form, shape, uh, tools, etc. are addressed in the composition. And uh, I think uh, the value of art uh, lies in the relationship with the formal elements of work. The art form I would like to focus on here 
his mural painting using alphabetical elements and the style and the reason i chose uh, the pakistani art form is to celebrate our very own artist and the unique style of painting which not only elaborate the artist's command over uh, the skill and craft but managing the scale of work in an allocated space this form of art gave pakistan a huge uh, recognition internationally and brought us the respect within the world of art uh, the mural art form is not only uh, just a visual treat uh, but it in indulges you to dive deeper and uh, explore the art in its virtuous capacity uh, it tells you the story of times and the space uh in a beautiful and grand way um the best part of uh, mural painting is that it stays there and becomes part of the space and it provides value to the designated space talking here about mural paintings and the only name that pops up in my mind uh is the satkan uh, sayed satkan ahmed naqvi a painter a poet uh, a calligrapher a thinker and much more was born in amroha uttar pradesh india uh, and at the age of 18 he migrated to karachi pakistan uh, and he left this world in february 1987 during his life span he produced a remarkable body of work and one of his murals uh, displayed at the baitul quran section uh, ground floor of the punjab public library is mainly the focus of my analysis uh, the mural was a gift to the people of lahore uh, it was painted in 1967 in the same space uh, as the library where it is still displayed uh, the mural was painted uh, considering the dynamics of the space and it reflects the purpose of the space Uh, Satkan spent almost six years uh, in France from 1961 to 1967, uh, and we can see a little glimpse of uh, Picasso uh, in his artwork. Uh, he has also been named uh, the Picasso of Pakistan. Uh, Sat, uh, I think Satkan knew best uh, to turn a space into a canvas where the public uh, engages and becomes. uh the audience uh and the resonating social commentary uh and uh, considering pakistani culture and islamic art forms like calligraphy uh and bold strokes hold immense significance uh, performing a formal analysis uh, of the mural painting uh, that has no title uh the mural was painted using oil paint on six vertical panels of hardboard of 4 by 8 feet as you can see i'm pointing here 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 uh and then it combined to make a horizontal piece of a 24 by 8 feet mural as you can see the elements of sun uh arrowheads uh urdu arabic alphabets uh, a book uh and numerous stylized vertical or standing figures uh and the rays of lights uh are ordered in asymmetrical composition although the mural has a uh, countless numbers of uh, arrows emerging out and uh, the standing figures are there as well but the visual weight of the mural lies uh, in the bright spherical sun uh, the height of the stylized uh, uh, figure varies uh, and somewhere it uh, uh, goes above the height of the sun uh, the visible uh, alphabets are proportionally smaller uh, within the mural uh, the repetition of the stylized uh, figures uh, creates a contrast with the emerging sun and the uh arrowheads uh, and you can see the element of book uh, and the vertical stylized figures painted within the radius of the sun creates a visual contrast of uh, shapes and colors uh, 
there is a definite visual flow uh, in the painting uh, where you can see uh, the eyes start traveling uh, taking the sun as the uh, focal uh, visual element um, the various arrowheads uh, emerging out of the sun provides uh, a definite direction to the eyes as you can see the use of colors sets the mood of uh, this mural and allows the audience to read and relate with the painting defines its purpose as well uh, the colors used are orange uh, black hues of brown blue and green uh, but the dominant color of all is a warm color uh, orange um, um, which represents energy um, heat power movement life etc the rest of the color colors uh, contrast with orange mainly uh, cool colors and earthy tones uh, the set intensity of uh, colors make it makes it fall to a dull side uh, the intentional use of uh, bright and dark uh, colors symbolizes the enlightenment and empowered uh, the mural is uh, composed using organic shapes uh, the use of lines is in abundance uh, as you can see in this mural painting and uh, around the sun uh, the emission of lines uh, turns pointed outwards uh, with urdu and arabic uh, alphabets uh, the lines take shapes uh, and becomes forms uh, and turns into stylized uh, vertical figures uh, the twists and turns uh, of these lines somewhere thick and elsewhere thin uh, create these stylized uh, figures uh, these figures also converge and culminate uh, towards a pointed end the effective use of space can be seen in the painting. Uh, the painting has been composed placing elements in foreground and background. The mural was uh, painted left with no negative space. Uh, the illusion created by lines converging in the composition uh, giving a linear perspective to it. Looking at the mural with the approximate 10 feet, uh, the painted mural appears to have a little rough texture where the source of light is the center of the painting. The overall uh, light is uh, there to build uh, the character of the elements used in the painting uh, and define the volume of the uh, character. The mural painted by Sadakan uh, has a great symbolic meaning to it and it portrays a strong narrative. The central element of sun depicts uh, the source of knowledge with emerging rays in the form of arrowheads and with alphabets on the tips. Uh, shows the inevitable power of uh, knowledge that uh, provides a strength uh, to conquer and reach its destination. Whereas the stylized figures uh, looking, up to the, looking up to the source of knowledge are the representation of the seekers uh, evolving into beings that absorbed the knowledge uh, and rising from ashes to the skies. Uh, the visual elements of Urdu, Arabic alphabets uh, and a book uh, asserts a strong emphasis on the narrative communicated through the pain through this painted uh, mural. Comparing the set mural uh, painting of Satkan with uh, his contemporary, a modern uh, artist, Shakir Ali's mural painting, uh, 1969, uh, displayed in the same vicinity of Bedul Quran, Punjab Public Library, Lahore. And you can see the image below. Shakir Ali painted this mural after two years of Sadhakan in 1969, 
Both the artists painted murals using approximately similar size surfaces. Uh, Shakir Ali used oil painting, oil paints on canvas, and Saad Khan uh, used oil paints on boards. The atmospheric, <clears throat> the atmospheric perspective is visible using uh, brighter and darker tones in the foreground uh, and uh, lighter, lighter ochre uh, tone in the background. Uh, and it gives a sense of depth to the painting as well. The mural is purely a calligraphic uh, painting um, having inscriptions of Quranic verses uh, painted horizontally, vertically to create a balance in the composition. Um, the negative spaces are intelligently filled uh, with floral patterns or in use of red. The use of crisp lines uh, with defined edges as you can see in the uh, picture as well uh, a very definite uh, meaning to understand the beauty of holy script and its connotation um, the visual elements play a dynamic role uh, in both the cases uh, it, and it connects uh, directly to the audience although the use of allegory by sadhgan and his painted mural is more complex and grasps the interest of the audience and provokes uh, people to indulge uh, more into his realm of art by looking at it thoroughly. Well, in this part of uh, my paper, uh, I will discuss um, if uh, this painting or this mural of Sadhakan is the work of uh, calligraphy or uh, is it called uh, a calligraphic painting or it's uh, just a mural painting uh, so I think in a Muslim society uh, of Pakistan uh, the calligraphy is taken as a pious or sacred form of art where its acceptance is wide enough and the language of it is relatable to the culture of Pakistan. But in my opinion, this art form does not fall under the category of calligraphic painting. Uh, although Satkan used uh, huruf till uh, alphabets and till they are up uh, as the elements, uh, um, these were the elements that served the purpose to elaborate the subject matter. Uh, they were not creating any specific word or uh, sentence, rather used huruf and arab, uh, gathered and turned into forms. Uh, so this can uh, also be witnessed in his uh, works like Red uh, Sun Over Cactus Land. Interesting fact is that the uh, artist did not give any uh, title to his painting but the title the light of the book was given by the audience it created a dialogue uh, where the doors are always open for any debate uh, the mural painted by sadkan is well suited for the space considering the purpose of it and uh, the cultural and historical factors into mind uh, you can see the image of red sun over cactus than in the other uh, slide this is the image of the painting red sun over cactus land and you can see uh, the elements are turning uh, into uh, shapes and shapes are turning into forms uh, in a particular way so now I'm concluding my presentation here. Uh, Satkan's work is an illustration of poetic endeavor. The way a verse is formed, employing metaphors to create a flow. In the same manner, the set painting is a visual poetic work by Satkan. This visual poetry convinces our eyes to appreciate uh, the painting in its own language and try and understand its twists and turns while the eyes travel within the painting. To conclude here, I leave my readers with a quote from Satkan. Uh, and he said, Rang ka musabir nahi, shakal ka musabir. 
بنیادی طور پر نقاش ہوں اور خطات نہیں تھینک یو فار لسنگ السلام علیکم رباب الوی ہے آئی ایم فل اسکالر فرام جی سی یو لاہور اٹ از مائی پرولیج ٹو پرزینٹ مائی ریسرچ پیپر ان دس ورچوئل کنسیپٹ مائی ریسرچ ٹائٹل از ڈسکسنگ دا فارمل ایلیمنٹس آف حسین چاند جوس پینٹنگ بفور بفور نوئنگ دا امپورٹینس آف مائی ریسرچ ریسرچ آئی ووڈ لائک ٹو ایڈ سم لائنس about formalism are these the formalism is the dictionary of color line form and texture it laid down a perfect artwork now i will discuss the importance of my research is that by applying the theory of formalism we could able to understand contemporary techniques and styles by discussing Hussein Janjo's work. Furthermore, my research question is this, how an artist can depict expression of subject matter by applying unusual color on their face to represent real words characters. Furthermore, I will discuss the brief overview of my research paper is this, Many artists in Pakistan worked in this genre, but the reason to choose Hussain Chanjo's work will be the more effective method for comprehending formalism theory. Hussain Chanjo's distinctive painting style is characterized by its use of vivid neon colors and a bird eye view of the composition, which are the most common aspect. His painting are direct representation of lively Sindhi culture. It may be argued that in order to make this art stand out, he is the only artist in Pakistan who has choose to paint from a bird eye perspective. Rather to using still images, he must fully capture motion in his artwork. When it comes to observation, Hussein Chandio possesses an extraordinary eye. He is skilled in art. He used acrylic media in both transparent and opaque way. He depicts subject matter in a very different style. He represents characters in his subject matter, their feature unusual. Hussein Chandio has contributed to his specific diverse style. This research paper has selected to below painting for applying formalism theory. Moreover, I am going to discuss how to apply theory of formalism on Hussein Chandio's a particular painting from his collection, The Journey. Regarding his specific painting, I will share and discuss the background and context. In this painting, Hussein Chandra depicts a female of Sindhi minority community. She is wearing a cultural, vibrant attire and adorned with a heavy jewelry, which is specifically worn by nomadic groups of people in Sindh. It also shows that the woman is a very happy in her stature. In addition, I will discuss formal analysis of painting. The formalism is a good technique for applying Hussein Chandio's art artwork when his painting receive a view from viewer in the first glance he and she notices woman figure who is wearing traditional embroidered clothes, choli and gagra, along dupatta on her head. 
She also wearing jewelry like necklace, bangle, rings, handcuff and nose ring. The painting portrays that a woman is sitting in a static position. She is also passing a smile in a very lively manner. Artist Hayes contrasts his vibrant female figure with the background to catch the attention of viewer. He has used many elements in this composition like line, shape, texture, form, color, col and color value. It can be appreciated on the two main aspects of painting. One is the unusual mismatching color on her face which show her fullfulness with joy and happiness rather than the real life miseries, suffering which are common in such kind of subject matters. Other aspect in the perspective of formalism is segmented line on the foreground of subject matters which is a unique style of Hussein Chandio's artwork for acquiring eye-catching view of viewer. Additionally, I will discuss comparative analysis. Many artists in Pakistan are working on this kind of subject matter like Ali Abbas, Atar Jamal, Tariq Javed and Bandai Ali. Every artist has its own style and technique in Pakistan as well as their aspect and representation are different from each other. For example, artist Ali Abbas to work on nomadic communities living style in which he usually depict daily chores within watercolor technique. Bandai Ali, another artist who had worked in oil painting technique, he most commonly depict the dancing ladies is a subject matter. The dancing ladies in his painting adore with traditional jewelry and clothes. The Tariq Javed's inspiration to this subject matter seem in a very different aspect. Tariq Javed depict women with a beautiful imaginary sharp features rather than natural features. Women are adoring with excessive jewelry and a lavish clothes in his painting. The artist Chandio's artistic approach is different than others. Because Chandio uses unusual colors on the faces of his painting characters, which usually mismatch with the real colors. The amazing thing about Chandio's this kind of approach of using unusual color never spoil the beauty of portraits, rather it enhance it. Now the conclusion. The Hussein Chandio's artwork is a very most profoundly represent the formalism's theory. His artwork is very significant for representing the epitome of formalism in contemporary style in front of artist sphere. Here I have some related reviews. I will discuss some published article on Chandio's work. One of them is uh, which is published by Indon News in 2015. Uh, according to this article, the most interesting aspect about Chandio's work is that the movement in every scene, the sense that he paints are not static. Rather, they all have people moving whether it is on motorbike, tanga, boat or on foot.